Julian Reed. The Bahamas welcomes its 12th Governor General. Good morning, I'm Julian Reed. Good morning, I'm Jiminita Swain. Yes, well, welcome to the lower grounds of Mount Fitzwilliam. And uh, in a few minutes, uh, we will be prepared to uh, welcome our newest Governor General, the Right Honorable Cynthia Pratt. Now, the ceremony will be much different than yesterday's. It'll be a lot shorter. And um, uh, the invocation will be given by Bishop Hubert Kemp. Then there will be the Royal Commission appointment by the Prime Minister and, of course, the Oath of Office by the Chief Justice and then a national honor conferred also by the Chief Justice. And, of course, we will hear from the Prime Minister and then, of course, the new Governor General, the Right Honorable Cynthia Pratt, um, whom we all know. Well, definitely, Julian. We've been seeing for much of the morning most of the guests arriving, some elegantly dressed in their hats and their fascinators, some with gloves. Not everybody wearing gloves, but they came prepared for the occasion. Obviously, it's a beautiful day, a contrast to yesterday when we had those showers of blessings. Uh, absolutely. But a beautiful morning shaping up so far. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, now, let's take a look back. We'll do a little recap of what happened yesterday. As we said, farewell to uh, Sir Cornelius A. Smith. Well, today we have a few guests who have personal experiences with Cynthia Mother Pratt. And our first one is someone who uh, we know very well at the Broadcasting Corporation, the one and only Elaine Ferguson. Welcome, Elaine. Thank you, Julian. Now, and your, your history with uh, Mother Pratt goes how far back? Oh, it goes... Actually, I first met her when I was preparing to go to school in Raleigh, North Carolina several years ago but I have a personal experience with her and this is the first time that I'm actually telling this story but several years ago when I left ZNS due to what I call I don't even like to use this word challenges facing women <laughs> in the mid years <laughs> okay you know what I'm talking about there's no medication for that you just have to overcome I said Lord what shall I do what steps shall I take I said speak to me in a dream give me the vision and early one morning I dreamt that I was in communication with the first female to be elected to Parliament. That's Dame Janet Bostwick. And I said to her in the dream, I need to talk. I need your life story. And then I jumped up. And my husband said, what's wrong with you? I said, it's just a dream. It's just a dream. When I initially approached her, she said that, she was not yet ready but later I got that interview with her which I now have and then I say father but I need something else then I saw the one home we affectionately and respectfully call mother Pratt and I called her I said mother Pratt I need your life story she said yes I'd be happy to give it to you but I said, but, I said, don't think money because you don't need any money. I said, I will do this documentary on your life story free, just like that. I said, and I will get some persons to help me. And I called Roscoe Gibson and Kenneth Sands. I said, I need your help. 
They said, we'd get back to you. I said, okay. And it was later produced. A two-part television series on the life story of Mother Pratt. And, and tell me now, please, Elaine, what did you learn um, after doing, of course, I, you know, you're a researcher, we know that. Um, but what did you learn from uh, doing this documentary about, about Mother Pratt that you didn't know before? And uh, obviously it must have given you an even greater uh, level of respect for her. Julian, Mother Pratt is a woman of God. What I have learned was her level of poverty. Last night, I went back to the interview to ensure that I give it to you as she has given it to me. She said, hmm. oh God, her story is a touching one. Taking the roach mm, out of her food. Wow, yeah. And eating it because there was nothing in it, okay? She talks about her, her story is one that will cause you to scream, Jesus, Jesus. Sometimes I have to pause even in telling people about this, okay? Going down to Bay Street to sing for the tours. Mm -hmm. Yes. One, two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. to survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when that didn't work, eating the rotten mangoes. You see. But, but look, how, look how her life has been transformed mm -hmm. and how she has transformed other people's lives. You know, one, I've always said one of the most important um, uh, requirements of being a governor general is to bring people together. And she's been doing that all her life. All of her life she's been doing, she's been assisting students with scholarships. And even her life story is one of encouragement because we have an incoming governor general who says that she has been sleeping among rats and centipedes. And I said, how would she tell somebody that? But it's, it probably had to be told because she was not the only one. But let's hear from uh, the incoming Governor General right now um, talking about what it meant to her, means to her, to become the country's next Governor General. And I give God the praise. And at this time, I would publicly love to thank my Prime Minister for considering me and, of course, the Bahamian people who have supported me these many years. And so I'm gracious, and I know that they have displayed their confidence in me. Um, so I can't let them down, you know. But through it all, it's really no difference to me because I've sat in so many seats before of leadership. If you can recall, Prime Minister had a massive stroke, and I was thrust in to the leadership of the country in politics. And so, you know, that was much more difficult than this position because you had to deal with the political side of it. And of course, you must have answers right away. And so I was able, I was able to go through all of this, who prepared me. And so leadership is something that I wasn't just thrust into. I came up the path, and I've been leading this community for some time. And then, of course, college of arms, education, high schools, nursing, the church. And so this is really nothing, nothing new to me, but I know that leadership requires love and concern for your people. That's the bottom line. You lead people. And so when you lead people, you must know where you're going in order to lead those people in the right path. Particularly a young man that's dear to my heart.
Well, we are going to go to my colleague, Jiminita Swain, right now, who is outside the actual tent, and she has a special guest with her. Here, and I'm with the Minister of Economic Affairs, the Honorable Michael Haukidis. Good morning to you, Minister. Good morning. Good morning. Pleasure uh, to be here. Wonderful. Now, I know that you would have served with Mother Pratt at another time. Talk to yes. us about the significance of seeing her rise through politics now to the one of the highest offices uh, in the land. Very, very significant achievement. Very, very happy and proud to be here today. Yes, I served uh, with the Honorable Cynthia Mother Pratt uh, from 2002 to 2007 in the House of Assembly. And this um, occasion is indeed a joyous one because it shows that um, it really epitomizes the Bahamian story of individuals who can rise from the humblest of beginnings. And Mother Pratt's uh, career and her life is one of service, uh, from a little girl in the service industry to becoming a nurse, uh, then a teacher, then a coach, and of course a mentor, a community leader, a parliamentarian, eventually deputy prime minister, and now uh, to the head of state uh, to be installed here today as governor general. And all throughout that career, uh, she never uh, lost touch. She maintained the common touch. In fact, uh, she never moved out of her community and continues even today to serve her community and to reach those uh, most vulnerable amongst us. So it's indeed a um, very, very happy occasion for me to be able to be here to share in this. And it's a demonstration to all, especially, especially our, our young girls and young women, of what can happen when you have uh, self-discipline, um, and a commitment uh, to working hard and an abiding faith in, in your Christian values. And that was going to be my next question in terms of you mentioning the common touch. Mm -hmm. Based on a diversity of guests that we have here, we see that Mother Brad has touched so many lives. Touched so many lives both here and abroad and continues to do so. From I remember a little uh, growing up as a boy in, in Coconut Grove, um, so many people when she was um, a coach. Uh, in um, North Carolina, um, so many people who had the opportunity through sports and through academics to uh, get a further education and thus improve their, their life. And I'm sure um, today, as you'll have many, many testimonies of people whose lives she has touched. And I must say, during our service in the House of Assembly together, every single contribution she made, she, um, you know, stressed the importance of us looking out uh, for those, um, you know, what we'd call the least amongst us, the vulnerable, the poor, that continues to be her commitment. Thank you so much, Senator the Honorable Michael Hawkeyes. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. You. Back to you, Julian. Thank you, Jim and Now, um, uh, we're going to go to another piece uh, with the uh, incoming Governor General in a minute. But before that, uh, in the last piece, uh, Mother Pratt spoke about leadership. What are the leadership qualities? do you think she will bring that will become the hallmark of her tenure as governor general well i think that first of all she would teach us to be humble and then as she says in a second interview which i have done with her to know what is expected of you and in being a leader she said that you must first make a decision to serve the people. She speaks about serving the people straight through. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, you know, you talk about being humble, and of course you said before she came from humble beginnings. We're now going to listen to her talk about our experience from the beginning. I think I must go back to my mom, because I watched her. It was many of us, 16 children. It was though my mom was having a child every year. One was holding her skirt, one was in the carriage. Sometimes one is in the tummy. And she had to make do for all of us, but she was not afraid to fail. She was not afraid to feel, and I watched her. She struggled, and we were always looked down upon because we were poor, because there were so many of us. 
and we had to find ways to survive. We lived in a house that was not presentable, and it was twisted on the side, holes in the sides of the building that we looked through, we looked through and watched the cars rolling down the streets that we'd stuff at night with cloth to stop the rats from coming in. You talk about struggle. I had to come through those things. But I always knew that I had a brain. I knew that I had something to give. But who saw me? Nobody. Because you had a moxie class. These were the days when people of color was nobody. And so I watched all of this growing up as a young girl, being rejected, having good intentions, but because you are that clan, people didn't talk with us. They spoke at us. So we, we had no response because we were nobody. And so my mother came through all of that, but she never gave up. And that is why I'm able to be as strong as I am. I grew up with so many brothers, and I often say this, rough and tumble, never grumble. Just keep moving know how to survive, but do it the honest way. Well, we heard the story of her humble beginnings, and really it is quite a story. And, and to think from what she's been through to actually now be the resident of this amazing edifice. Um, but before, I, I want you to say one last thing before we say goodbye to you and thank you for your contribution to this broadcast. One last thing I'd like to say is that this story of Mother Pratt is exactly what she tells of in her book. No equal to God's chosen. A leader risen above poverty, from poverty to destiny. She must have had a dream. This is a blessing for Mother Pratt. And this is encouragement to the Bahamian woman that you can make it despite the odds in your life, despite the challenges. All right. You and can make it. Thank Be encouraged. You. Thank you so much, Elaine Ferguson, for being on this broadcast. Thank you for having me. Great. We're now going to actually show you a piece that highlights the accomplishments of the incoming Governor General. I can begin by saying I was the first woman to be elected to lead a major political party. Now, a lot of people didn't know that because I never really talk about it. Then I was the first woman to be elected from the inner city. Okay, we've never had a female who was able to represent the inner city, particularly who lives among the people. And I believe I'm the only woman who still lives among her people. And then I was the first to be Deputy Prime Minister in my country. I was the first to experience a Prime Minister who was ill for two months. I had to lead the country as Prime Minister for two months, the longest period of time. Now, there were others who were named acting Prime Minister, but they never served that length of time. And so, all of these things that I think about, I knew that God was preparing me for this time. 
Then, when I look at my life in the church, I believe, I believe that as a woman, when I was ordained to the ministry, that no other prime minister, no other leader in the country was able to get the both prime ministers, the one that was in office and the one that had retired, to sit by my side while I was being ordained. And then I believe that I am the first person in the Bahamas to receive the Mandela Award, the Nelson Mandela Award. And what they did, they've sent two princesses out of Africa to present that award to me. And I want it done in St. Cecilia. They did it at the church where Prime Minister Ingram and Prime Minister Christie sat on my side. These things are very important to me because it's history making for our country. And so I, I never really look at my life to see that I was the first for this or the first for that. What I wanted to do was make sure that I was a success. And on my path coming up, my people are coming along with me. That's what's important to me. Well, my next guest was a student of Cynthia Pratt. He is the Member of Parliament for Yamakura and the Minister of State for Education, the Honourable Zane Lightburn. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good. Thank you for having me. What impact did Cynthia Pratt have on your life? Well, she was definitely an inspiration, as she was to many. When I was at the College of the Bahamas, I remembered my first encounter with Mother Pratt. She was the activities director or assistant director but she played such a pivotal role in the in all of the activities that happened at the college of the bahamas that she was the the primary focus in many uh, lives and in many of our lives um in all that we did she was an advisor by extension on all things um her emotional intelligence uh, I think was because of her background as a, a sociology major as one of her degrees were and she definitely brought life to to the college and, and structure to the lives of some of the young men now who I who I see today we remember those days that um, that that brought inspiration to us and gave us direction and focus well we know she always says she likes to touch the hearts of young men um, that's a real passion for her and that she did yes she did she she was um, instrumental in getting a lot of us um, to go abroad to college I had my first um, I had a, a scholarship to St. Augustine where she attended and uh, I was unable to take the scholarship at the time. It was a partial scholarship, but my mother wanted me to finish the College of the Bahamas. And she said, right now, we can't afford for you to get up and go. And you started teaching. I need you to finish this first, and then you can decide what to do. But uh, Mother Pratt would have awarded me that opportunity to attend St. Augustine in North Carolina. Now tell me, did you seek counsel from her as you um, uh, made the decision about entering politics? Certainly, um, her, her life itself, you know, it's, it's, um, it's something to help in guidance. Because I remembered Mother Pratt, I was in the union, as many people know, uh, as an educator. I was heavily involved in the teachers' union. And she would have provided guidance to us at that time, also as officers of the union and as teachers. And she participated in many annual general meetings. Additionally, she, she would have given advice um, once I presented myself as an aspirin candidate for Yamakura. Uh, and definitely, um, she always called me my, her son. She said, look at my son. And, you know, it's, um, it's such a warm feeling to see her elevate and continue to elevate because it speaks to the person she is. I had no doubt that Mother Pratt, if she was not chosen, that she would be highly considered. And, you know, one of my, my favorite picks for for any position in this country because she is such a great leader and she understands the heart of people. So um, I congratulate her on her continued achievements. Every time you think that she's reached the pinnacle, she goes higher. 
And so it's a testament, it's testament to the life and inspiration of many people who come from, you know, from what we consider sometimes nothing to greatness. I think she was great before she knew it, and that's it. Wow, that's wonderful. Jane Lightman, thank you so much for being here, and I'm sure we know you have to run, and I'm sure you will have immense pride as this ceremony goes on. Thank, thank you, you so for much joining for having us. me. Good. Right, good. Great. We will now listen to what uh, Cynthia Pratt says about her family and friends. Well, it shows you it doesn't matter where you come from. We can achieve or attain anything that we set our minds and our hearts on to do it. So that name Mother Pratt not, is not just a mother for our kids, but she's, a bit, she's been a mother for all of us here, all of us residents in this school and children throughout the length and breadth of this bar, beautiful Bahama land. To see where she came from, to see where she are today, I mean, it's been a long struggle. And I mean, basically, but with the family, we, we get used to sharing our mother our whole life. So I'm just happy for her. I want to say thank you to the Bahamas, because without the Bahamas, she wouldn't be elevated the way that she is. She's a servant by heart, and she's been accepted by so many as that servant. She has continued her lifespan of loving, and it's so nice to see that she's being loved back in return. She's a dynamic woman. She's an awesome mother. A wonderful wife. Lord bless my father, because he predicted this. Many people don't know that, but he said that she would be at the top one day. She didn't see it. And she would say, Joe, stop playing. And he'd be like, no, I'm serious. I see it in you, and I want you to continue. He was her strongest supporter. And after him was us. Well. I knew Mother Pratt all my years, because I born and grew up in the Grove. All my years I knew Mother Pratt from since I was small. And she's a good woman. She helped out the community. She well deserves appointment. This is a great day for my family. This is a great day for Coconut Grove, St. Cecilia, nurses, educators, St. Augustine's College, the whole country at large. Everybody she, she is touched. This is a great day, and I know everybody is excited for her. And in this bench, she will prove you proud again, like she always do. And the thing that stood out most in my mind about Mother Pratt was that she was an educator, uh, an educator par excellence. And she was one of those persons who constantly got um, children from out of the Grove area um, scholarships to a place that she taught in North Carolina. And so hence, um, she always stood out, and of course a sports figure, but she always stood out in our minds as someone who um, wanted to help the Bahamian children um, get further in scholarships and those sort of. And so, we really and truly had her, have her on a pinnacle because there are many homes in this country, well, in the Grove community, that she has helped the children of that, the, those homes to get further in their education. friends and family they're talking about Cynthia Pratt now just a few moments before this induction ceremony gets underway but we're gonna go to Jiminita Swain first hi again Julian we're standing here now with Mitzi Turnquist she is a part of the incoming governor general's team and she has a special presentation that will be taking place this morning good morning Mitzi talk to us a little bit about this presentation that you have all lined up Good morning. Well, this is a new day for us in the Bahamas. This is a day where we get to see somebody that looks like us, that actually that that comes from the inner city, a little humble girl who had uh, the most disastrous beginning. And we began to see that she's rise from the pit to the palace. Mother Pat wrote a book about a couple years ago, and he called the pit to the palace, not knowing that she was writing our own story. And so today we try to make that come to life. And we want to inspire and empower every little girl to understand that it's not how you start, but how you finish. And so today we brought little girls from her community, the little girls that get to see her, that now get to touch the hem of her garments and get to realize that, you know what, if she can do it, then I can do it too. So today is more empowering for all the little girls around the Bahamas to understand it's not how you start. And that's what this gift this presentation is so symbolic of 
And so we, these locals are here today just to be inspired, just to be empowered, to walk away today to understand that they too can rise to this level and they too can achieve this level of greatness. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I know that she will definitely enjoy that presentation. Absolutely. Back to you, Julian. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Jim Anita. Of course, a lot of love already um, uh, being expressed for Cynthia Pratt, the incoming Governor General. And that induction ceremony is about to begin, and we will take you there in just a moment. Um, I believe we have another piece before we go to the ceremony. Okay, well, we'll take you now straight inside uh, to... Uh, where the where the uh, ceremony is and if you take a look on your screen right now you can see the room is uh, filling up and uh, just to remind you how this program will be again the mistress of ceremony is uh, Rosalind Horton who's secretary to the governor general the governor general designate will come into fanfare the national anthem will be played the invocation by Bishop Hubert Kemp the uh, Royal Commission of Appointment will be read by Nicole Campbell, who is Secretary to the Cabinet. It will be signed by the Prime Minister. Then the oath of office will be administered by the Chief Justice, who will also confer on her the National Honor, Order of the Nation, which will give her the designation Most Honorable. We'll have a selection from the Royal Bombers Defense Force Band, and then the Prime Minister will give an address. And after that, there'll be more selections and then the response from the new Governor General. She will inspect the guard before she leaves. Today of bringing you a and that should bring this uh, House on actual ceremony to an end. Uh, Jiminita, you've been out there, and uh, what's the feeling like? Um, uh, we know Mother, Mother Pratt is in a way which you could call a crowd pleaser. So um, what's the feeling you got out there? I think everyone is excited. Like, they were... They just wanted to be a part of this occasion, like I was speaking to Senator Alkidis earlier, and he talked about that common touch of uh, Cynthia Mother Pratt. And just now with Mitzi Turnquist, she talked about the importance of showing little young girls, not only for, from her constituency or her community, but throughout the Bahamas and the world to see what is possible. So there is the sense of excitement, the sense of enthusiasm, that everybody's just thrilled to be a part and to be just present to celebrate with her today. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for you as a young woman? Possibility. Possibility. Like I, I listened to Mitz, even though we spoke briefly just now, and she talked about Mother Brad writing a book and not knowing at that time that she was potentially writing her own story. And I think sometimes you say God has a sense of humor. Like sometimes you go through stuff and you don't know where you're going to end up. Like just being in broadcasting, I thought I was going to be a teacher, but who knew I was going to be a broadcaster? So you really never know where you're going to end up. Who knew? Do, did, we, did she have a dream to become the governor general? Who knows? Just I take away from this, never limit yourself. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Just, just keep pursuing your passion, whatever it is, and being excellent in whatever you do, and you never know where that will take you. Absolutely. Now, um, uh, if you take a look inside, you want to give a little further description from what you see there? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, yesterday we, ha we had the guests being entertained by the Royal Bahamas um, Police Force Band, but now they have the stylings of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force Pop Band to entertain and engage them until the arrival of the guest of honor. A number of invited guests, current uh, parliamentarians, former uh, parliamentarians, and a number of guests in terms of family and friends. Yes, absolutely. Um, and as I said, you know, this ceremony will be a lot shorter than yesterday's. Um, and uh, right now on the screen, uh, and regrettably, uh, the screen is not as clear as it could be. We have a little bit of glare here. But it gives here. us a little we're seeing, uh, snippet the, the, of The very different modes of, of, of Cynthia Pratt. Um, I, I'll tell you, uh, do you have any personal stories of her? She was always energetic and engaging. I, I remember when she served as the Minister of National Security. She is always, you know, in whatever capacity she serves, and she's always passionate. She always, as, as uh, Senator Alkides pointed out, she always talked about remembering the vulnerable, remembering mm. the least among us. That, that, the first time I met her, I was a reporter. I'd only been a reporter for about a year, maybe, and uh, um, we went to the prison. She was doing as, because she was National Security Minister, and we went to the prison. And as 
we walk through the courtyard, all you could hear screams from the inmates, mother, mother, mother. Like, they all loved her. Yeah. And they all became little boys, it seemed like, once again. And then she sat me down. She says, you know, Julian, I believe in touching hearts. And then she put her hand on my heart. She is really a powerful woman, I'll tell you. She is. She yeah. is. And it, it, you always feel connected in some way. You always feel the the trueness of what she is saying mm -hmm. to you. So it was always a pleasure talking or interacting with her. I could imagine the humility that we saw when the, the announcement was made, when um, our colleague Lloyd Allen went to talk to her. You know, she was just so graceful and humble about this next elevation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but it, it is amazing when you do hear about her story from where she came, uh, for, from when she came and now where she will be heading. Yes, Mom, this is the highest office. And I'm sure, you know, as she intimated, you know, as a little girl, was never going to get anywhere near these pink walls. I know. Forget I about know. getting inside them. So imagine now being the person, the representative of King Charles III. And, you know, we have to remember, too, that she actually acted as prime minister for a period, two months. Yes. Uh, during a, a very critical time because the then prime minister, um, uh, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, actually fell ill. Yes. And she stepped right in. Of course, she had lots of support, but she stepped right in and did what she had to do to keep the country going. And he is among the invited guests inside. Oh. I was hoping to just grab him out and do a quick interview um, with him to talk about um, having her a part of, you know, the, that moment serving in his cabinet. But we see, I guess we're expecting uh, the arrival of... Well, th there is, um, I think, uh, coming out of the car right now, that looks like that is the, uh, uh, the Governor General's, uh, one of her, I guess, who will, will be one of her close aides. Um, but she is uh, getting ready to come. Uh, She's exiting the vehicle, yeah. and we see the chief protocol officer, Terry Archer, um, uh, assisted her. Mm -hmm. And she's looking very lovely. Can you imagine what she's feeling today? It's probably like she's in a daze. Like, I the, know, right? Is this for real, you know? Um, but uh, knowing her, I am sure she will get straight to work and do what she has to do on behalf of the Bahamian people, um, as, as the people she loves. And she's shown this throughout her life. And as you mentioned um, previously, uh, the Governor General is one who is seen as a unifier. And I think that embodies who uh, the incoming Governor General is. She is about unity. She is about love. And so I will be excited to see what new elements, if any, she adds to her schedule now as the incoming Governor General. Well, you know, as Governor General, there are some things that are prescribed for you that you really... Must can't do. And, and, and shouldn't stray away from, but um, uh, she will definitely give it her personal touch. Um, and, um, you know, today is September 1st, right? And um, we know what happened four years ago on September 1st. Uh, and I'm Dorian. sure that uh, one of her first uh, priorities will be to continue to give support and encouragement to those people in Abaco and Grand Bahama who went through Dorian. Because we know that the, the memories are still very, very, very vivid. fresh. Yes. And obviously this is, too, again, a busy hurricane season. So even though that may have been four years ago, anytime you hear about another storm forming, um, they tell you to be prepared. But mentally, emotionally, it's like, oh, my God, do I have to go through this again? So it would be great if she is able, you know, to touch out and reconnect with those persons. But right now, this is celebration mode. Great. And can you imagine what our children are feeling in particular? I, I know do you, her, her, do you think her husband surprised? is no longer here. I, but I don't think that they're surprised, but you know if he was here, oh, he would be Because he, right he was there always with there with her. He was her. always with her. A we were big supporter. Her. And here she comes. You can see her coming through now. She's got, um, it looks like a sort of gold and brown uh, dress on uh, with sequins and uh, a very wide-brimmed black hat. But um, let me just outline what will happen again today. And we saw that that was the Prime Minister um, arriving in just ahead of her again, the Prime Minister, the Honorable yes. Philip Davis and Mrs. Davis. We see uh, the incoming Governor General doing some greetings. She is being escorted, of course, by the Commissioner of Police, uh, Mr. Clayton Fernander, and other security protocol details. Obviously, we do anticipate as expected, the uh, Commodore of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force as well. But again, she is doing just a little bit of greetings. So uh, this is the presentation I think uh, Mitzi Turnquest talked to us about. Some young little girls presented her with a bouquet 
of flowers as she was walking in just to say hey thank you thank you for allowing us to dream and seeing how you empowered us to give us an idea of where we can possibly end up one day uh, so very very passionate gracious. interview you had with her and uh Obviously, obviously, the um, uh, now if we pay attention to the, uh, the monitor, if you would describe what's happening there, please, uh, Jimmy. So, Prime Minister, uh, the Honorable Philip Davis and Mrs. Davis are making their official entrance into the hall. The everyone obviously is expected to stand after the Prime Minister will take a seat. Obviously, he's being guided by Chief Protocol Officer Mr. Terry Archer, but obviously, after. Uh, the Prime Minister and Mrs. Davis uh, are seated. We expect or anticipate that uh, the Governor General will make her entrance. Yes. Of course, the Prime Minister plays a very crucial role in today's events. He will sign the Royal Commission of Appointment. And, uh, and of course, we must remember that she uh, actually represents King Charles III. And at some point in the future, she will travel to London to receive her damehood. Um, have that sword placed on either side of uh, her head. And um, now we're going to take you directly into the hall where this induction ceremony will take place. And now the Governor General is making her entrance. Home. Quick handshake with former uh, Prime Minister Harry Christie. And so now that she is in, she will be seated. So we're going to send you here yeah, the rousing round of cheers and wow. applause uh, for uh, the incoming Governor General of the Bahamas. So we're going to take it to the program so you don't miss any moments from this celebratory. Mr. of Ceremony today, Rosalind Horton, the Secretary to the Governor General. bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we are excited this morning and grateful. We thank you because we believe in these Bahamar Islands that there is no God like Jehovah. And so we've come to call on that sacred name to invoke the name of, of the Lord Jesus as we move into these proceedings. We thank you because you always choose a man or a woman to do your work. And now we thank you because we believe that as we go forward, that your presence is with us, that you are near, that you will lead us and guide us, and that your hands will be on our Governor General designate. We ask all of these things, your blessings and your favor and your mercies on the Governor General designate and on the Bahama Islands. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, and all God's people say.
Thank you, Bishop Kim. The Right Honorable Cynthia Alexandria Pratt, Governor General Designate. The Honorable Philip Davis, Prime Minister and Minister of Finance and Mrs. Davis. Sir Ian Winder, Chief Justice and Marie Jacqueline, Lady Winder. The Honorable I. Chester Cooper, Deputy Prime Minister and Mrs. Cooper. Mr. Shenandoah Cartwright, Deputy Leader of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition, Members of Cabinet, Senators, Members of Parliament, Former Governors General, Former Prime Ministers, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Secretary to the Cabinet, Reverend Ministers of the Clergy, Senior Government Officials, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good Morning. I am Rosalind Dorset Horton, Secretary to the Governor General, and I am honored to serve as the Mistress of Ceremony this morning. Having served as a Deputy to the Governor General for the past two years, we are gathered here at Mount Fitzwilliam to witness the induction of this country's 12th Governor General. In the 50th year of independence, I think it is fitting that we are swearing in the third female Governor General of the Bahamas. A community leader, a philanthropist, and a woman of faith, the Right Honorable Cynthia Pratt is deserving of this high recognition of her dedication to serving the Bahamian people of all walks of life. She would never consider her efforts as worthy of note, but gives all honor to Almighty God for any achievement in her life. We appreciate her for her love, demonstrated in so many different ways, and consider her an inspiration to us all that all things are possible if we put God first. I now invite Mrs. Nicole Campbell, Secretary to the Cabinet, and the Honorable Philip Davis, Prime Minister, to read and sign the Royal Commission appointing the Right Honorable Cynthia Pratt as Governor General of the Bahamas and the representative of His Majesty in the Bahamas. All stand for the Prime Minister. Commission appointing the Right Honorable Cynthia Alexandria Pratt, Order of the Bahamas Companion, Justice of the Peace, to be Governor General of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Charles III, by the grace of God, King of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and of his other realms and territories, Head of the Commonwealth. To our trusty and well-beloved, the Right Honorable Cynthia Alexandria Pratt, Order of the Bahamas, Companion, Justice of the Peace, greetings. We do, by our commission under our sign manual signet, appoint you, the Right Honorable Cynthia Alexandria Pratt, Order of the Bahamas, Companion, Justice of the Peace, to be our Governor General of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas in accordance with Article 32 of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas with all powers, rights, and privileges and advantages to the said office belonging or appertaining. And further, 
We do hereby appoint that this our commission shall take effect on the first day of September 2023. And we do hereby command all and singular our officers and loving subjects in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and all other whom it may concern to take due notice hereof and to give their ready obedience accordingly. Given at our court of St. James this first day of September 2023, in the first year of His Majesty's reign, by His Majesty's command. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister and Secretary to the Cabinet. Your Excellency, I now invite you to take the oath of office as Governor General, which will be administered by Sir Ian Winder, Chief Justice. Chief Justice, Thank you. You may be seated. As Governor General, Your Excellency, you now qualify for the conferment of the Order of the Nation under the National Honor Society of the Bahamas and become the Chancellor of that society. Sir Winder, the Chief Justice, will now confer the Order of Nation 
by which Her Excellency will now use the title the most honorable and the prescribed letter of O.N. after her name. Chief Justice. Pratt, O.N., Governor General and Chancellor of the National Honors Society. now render a selection
that is your Royal Bahamas Defense Force. You are the Commander in Chief. That's your Defense Force band. It's now my distinct honor to invite the Honorable Philip Davis, Prime Minister, to the podium to bring remarks at this time. All stand. Please be seated. It speaks to her humility. She doesn't. Well, it's, uh, this is such a wonderful moment for me. <laughs> Good morning to all of us, and I stand on the protocol that has been established. Let's acknowledge all of the well wishes for your present. My Deputy Prime Minister, Cabinet colleagues, members of Parliament, former Prime Ministers, Former uh, Governor General, Dame Marguerite Penland, who's here present, and all uh, family and friends and well wishes of the lady from Coconut Grove. You know, we are here today to honor a woman who has served in so many capacities and with such dignity and grace that she earned the name Mother, a name that reveals the affection and gratitude of the many, many people she has cared for and helped through her storied career. The lives she has touched number in the thousands. I'm not alone in believing that she has had a special calling, an anointing to say, to be a protector and comforter for the Coconut Grove community and for many others throughout the Bahamas. She is the living embodiment of a servant leader. We are reminded how Christ described the path to true leadership and that path, whoever wants to be great among you, you must become a servant. Cynthia Mother Pratt has served her way to greatness. As she now rises as our nation's Governor General, it is my distinct pleasure to speak in support of an unparalleled nation builder, community leader, and civic icon. Cynthia Mother Pratt's life is a testament to the capacity for love within the Bahamian spirit. Hers is a career marked by selfless service, rooted in a profound commitment to conveying hope to people who need it most. She has inspired our youth as, a, as an educator, tended to our sick as a registered nurse, lifted the spirits of the lost as an ordained minister, and of course, served the residents of St. Cecilia as a member of parliament for 15 years. In each of these roles, compassion was the hallmark of her approach. Her time as the first female minister of national security was marked by a visionary, holistic approach to policing. Many point to her tenure as the point in which community policing really came into full force, as she drove the development of urban, urban renewal, which made an important difference to so many of our communities. While we often speak of her nurturing nature as the mother of a nation, I also wish to emphasize her strength. You see, she isn't just a comforter, she's also a defender of those who cannot defend themselves. And there can be no mistaking her kindness for weakness. Cynthia Mother Pratt is a force of nature with a passion for people. Her own story is a testament to her resilience. But even as she relied on that strength to move forward and to overcome hardship, she also shared it to uplift the people around her. There are countless stories of young women whose only pathway to a college came through Cynthia Mother Pratt. Take a walk through the grove and you will meet young men who will tell you that it was Mother Pratt who helped them to get a job, turn their life around, and break a cycle of poverty and imprisonment. Indeed, I have my own personal testimony to add here. Many years ago, Mother Pratt was among the first to encourage and support me. 
she reminded me that even though many thought him the least amongst his brothers, a lowly shepherd, David, was chosen by the prophet Samuel and rose to be king. To this day, I carry that lesson, that encouragement, and that inspiration with me. There could only ever be one Mother Pratt. Walking the path to greatness through servitude requires love, strength, and humility. When she served as the first female deputy prime minister and became the second woman to serve as acting prime minister, I was proud. Not only because the PLP government of the time had the foresight to place such a dynam dynamic woman in the highest levels of leadership, but also because she remained the same person with the same clarity that I put for our purpose on earth, and that is to help others. It is not only her humility that inspires, but her confidence and spirit. She believes her greatest accomplishment is succeeding when nobody believes she could. And she is fond of saying, I'm stronger when you say I can't do it. What a lesson for all of our young people to turn any discouragement you receive into rocket fuel. As the tatings of 16 children raised on West Street, the odds were certainly stacked against her. And yet, she did not relent. She served with dignity from Coconut Grove and now to Mount Fitzwilliam. Or, as he says in the title of her autobiography, from the pit to the palace. She is proof that the circumstances of one's birth need not determine one's lot in life. She is, my friends, the embodiment of the indomitable spirit of the Bahamian people. As we swear her in, or sworn her in, as the nation's 12th Governor General, we do so with a profound appreciation for a legacy for, of service and commitment to country. Her remarkable public career, her contributions to our community, and her sterling character make her the ideal choice for this office. Mother, I am confident that you will perform your duties with distinction as you have always done. I look forward to seeing you build on the legacy of your immediate predecessor, the most honorable Sir Canadian Smith. You will walk in the footsteps of Her Excellency Dame Marguerite Pinlin and Her Excellency Dame Ivy Dumont as the third woman to serve as Governor General. The Bahamas is still a young nation. Day by day, we have the opportunity, opportunity to grow stronger. And I'm certain your principal leadership will serve as that guiding light to ensure that we do grow stronger and stronger as we all remain together, because together we will be stronger. May God guide you in this new role, and may, the con and he can may, con and may he continue to bless you and bless the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you, Prime Minister, for your inspiring remarks, reminding us that we have a living example of a servant leader with strength, compassion, perseverance, and the indomitable spirit that marks the Bahamian people. Thank you, Prime Minister. Sergeant Kevo Major of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, by special request, will now render a selection.
a most appropriate song to describe the heart of Her Excellency. Oh, we just been to church. Amen. It's now my pleasure to invite Her Excellency, the most honorable Cynthia Pratt, Governor General, to respond to all that was said and done this morning. All staff. You may be seated. The Honorable Prime Minister and Mrs. Davis, Cabinet Ministers, Madam President and the members of the Senate, Honorable Chief Justice, Honorable Chief Justice of the Court of Appeal, members of the judiciary, members of parliament, former governor generals, former prime ministers, your excellencies, ambassadors, and High Commissioners, Ministers of the Clergy, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. Good morning. It's a good morning. To God be the glory, eh? I must be me. God must get the glory. And so I'm trying all I could to behave. But what's in you, it's in you. God is good. Same stone the builder rejects. Comes the head corner stone. I remember, you know, before I go into my speech, I remember in Parliament, they had a comedy in the newspaper about me. And I'm going to Parliament with my Bible under my arm. And they said, she's coming to preach now. <laughs> it is with tremendous pride and deep emotions. But I am responding today to the call of destiny, which sometimes takes us in a direction we might never have imagined in that context. I am deeply grateful to the Honorable Prime Minister for the confidence placed in me by nominating me for the 12th Governor General of our great Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I pledge to you, sir, and to the people of our nation that I shall, with help of Almighty God, to the best of my ability, faithfully discharge the duties and responsibility of this office in gratitude for this opportunity to serve the people of my beloved Bahamas. Ladies and gentlemen, today, before all of you, I am turning a significant page in my own story as I set off on this new adventure with unvaried hope and determination and a profound commitment 
to continue to serve the people of our nation as I have been doing for the past years. Firstly, I give thanks and praise to Almighty God who has brought me thus far and who gives me the will and ability to serve all our people. It is against that backdrop, ladies and gentlemen, that I pledge to give the best of my service as I occupy this lofty office for which I have so kindly deemed worthy. I believe it important to observe that appointment to the position of Governor General is proof that without aspiring to this high office by the grace of God, I am here dedicated to continue serving my beloved country and my people to the best of my ability. All of us are encouraged to believe that everything is possible in this country if we are dedicated to those principles which demonstrate loyalty, a love for people, and a solid belief in the superior power of our God, through which we are enabled to lift up our eyes to the rising sun. As I assume this distinguished position, I come therefore with a determined heart and a mind to promote and encourage the fullest application of those time-honored principles of mutual respect, self-discipline, sharing with others in our commitment to be law-abiding citizens proud in every respect to demonstrate to each other and to the whole world at large that we are a people of self-respect, loyal to the principles which unite us, ready and willing to promote and share those standards with each other and with the world at large. I am confident that all of these held together by our faith will mark the manner of our bearing nationally and will be an example to each other across the beautiful seas which unite our archipelago as one people. As I assume this office, these are the values which are paramount for me and they link intrigably by my faith and my conviction that our Bahamas can and will rally our creative forces through which we can achieve the best for all of our people. Ladies and gentlemen, as a mother, my eyes and ears are always open to the needs of our young people and the importance of doing all we can to uplift them so that as they grow into adulthood and inherit full responsibility for the continued development of our nation. However, we must acknowledge that our encouragement and support is essential to enable them to continue to establish efforts which allow them to inherit and manage a land where love and peace abound and where they can live in certain hope. It is essential, I believe, to do all we can to support those young people who are special 
due to situations beyond their control. And they also need our help and encouragement as they develop. And it is our solemn duty to assist them to rise above the trials they suffer and eventually become citizens, making positive contributions to our system and our development. And so, my young Bahamians, remember that there is a place for you in the growth and continued prosperity of our nation. However, we must be ever mindful of the hard work and sacrifices which your parents undertake so faithfully on your behalf. In that understanding, I am sure that you will fully demonstrate the love and respect due to those who work hard simply to help you to grow up as a responsible, educated citizen. I therefore urge you to ready yourselves and with a deep sense of pride to be part of the struggle to be a shining example for good to others, even beyond our shores, and contribute positively to the good reputation and development of our beautiful Bahamas. At the same time, ladies and gentlemen, we must never forget that there are among us older men and women who need an outstretched arm to assist them to live in dignity. These two have made sacrifices. I urge all who can stand ready to help wherever needs arise. And I invite you to support the weak, to lift up the fallen, and with the support of those of us who can, they will enable to live with respect and be a fruitful part of our communities. I therefore invite all to look around and see where help is needed, respond to those needs in whatever ways we can. I am convinced that we shall continue to accomplish great things if we work together to assure a better quality of life for all our people. Ladies and gentlemen, as I resume the office of Governor General, I undertake with great pride and determination to give my best in service to all our people and serve with honor and love. I pray with all my heart that together with the strength and vigor available to me and with the help of Almighty God, we shall together lift up our eyes to the rising sun and move ever upward and realize our dearest and most ambitious desires as we continue to build our nation in peace, love, and joy. May Almighty God ever lead us in all our laudable efforts. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for that call to action, reminding us to think of those who are in need. And following on that, Your Excellency, I beg leave for us to pause for a moment of silence as we remember those survivors of 
the Hurricane Doreen. This is the anniversary. Do I have your permission, ma'am? Okay, can we all stand for a moment of silence as we remember those who are still responding to Dorian. Thank you. You may be seated. As we prepare for the departure of Her Excellency for the Royal Salute to the newest Governor General of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas by the All-Female Guard of Honor comprised of members of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and Royal Bahamas Police Force. I invite you to remain in your seats until the end of the salute. We will be showing everything on the monitor behind you, and of course those close to the windows will have a front row seat. I indulge your cooperation, please. Your Excellency, are you ready? No, they're not ready yet. They have to get to place. Serving Governor General of the Bahamas as well. What did you think of our address? Were you surprised? No, not at all. Um, of course, like I have said time and time again, one of the most important roles of uh, Governor General is to be a unifier. And she spoke about loyalty, love for people, and love for God. And she uh, admonished younger people to take advantage of what is given to them and uh, to run with it, really. And also to respect your elders, and also to take care of the elderly. So she's on, according to that address, off to a good start, I think. And obviously we see on the screen now the all-female honor guard, uh, both from the Royal Bahamas Police and Defense Forces. Other things that uh, the most honorable Cynthia Bradwood have spoken to as well is pledging not only to the PM, but the people of the Bahamas to do to the best of our ability to faithfully discharge her duties and responsibilities of the office. She encouraged, like you mentioned, the young people to be shining examples of good to others as well, not only in country, but abroad as well. So some definitely uh, strong, encouraging words. Uh, and, and at the beginning, she seemed to be getting very excited. We had a very strong performance from Kepa Major. Yes. You know, so she was like, you know, I'm trying my best to behave. <laughs> So it was great to see her, you know, in her element. You know, she talked about her feelings, um, tremendous pride and deep gratitude. You know, it, it was it was really a touching speech. So right now she is getting ready to make her way outside to do the inspection of that honor guard who has been waiting for her arrival. And I'm sure she would be especially touched that it is an all-female honor guard. Um, actually, uh, one of the trainers of the police said, better get good shots of my girls. <laughs> <laughs> Taking ownership of the women that he probably prepared he's, he's for this He's proud of room. them. He's proud of them, and I'm sure the nation is as well. Um, but here she is. Uh, and the, the police commissioner in his capacity for the marshal and the uh, commodore of the Royal Bombers Defense Force. 
escorting the Governor General as she prepares to, for the first time, inspect the Honor Guard. And also joining them as well is the Governor General's aide de camp, as well as the Commissioner and the Commodore's aides as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, we also heard him uh, mention, as like you said, we cannot get through today without mentioning Hurricane Dorian. This those, is, those this is the anniversary of that event. And those who survived. And uh, as I said before, I believe that it'll probably be one of the first things on the new Governor General's agenda. And I know she will give uh, continued encouragement and support to those people and the situation there. And definitely the, we saw that they paused for a moment of silence to reflect and remember that tragedy. ceremony and the inspection of the God of with our new Governor General. 
and uh, she has been. What do you think? From what you've seen so far, will be some of the key things that she will offer the baby people, which she's been doing all her life, but at this highest level that she could do it. Uh, what do you think she will? Win? I think for starters, she will offer hope, as she touched on in Which her is a very speech. important thing. Hope is, is critical, isn't because it? Because there has been this, uh, I guess, uh, recurring theme from her book, talking about her coming from the pit to the palace. So I think her hope would come in the form of encouraging people to say, despite whatever your circumstance is, you could rise to that as well. We, we uh, heard from the Prime Minister earlier in his speech. He talked about the fact that he got uh, Mother Pratt, as uh, uh, she's known uh, commonly, has support from early on. And she recounted to him the story of Joseph and not being accepted by uh, his brothers. And, you know, he took that it with him and the importance of that story and what that meant. So she is one of those people that is always going to encourage you. So I think whoever she talks to, I don't know what she's saying to the young women that we see that are part of the honor guard, but I'm sure it's something encouraging and, and hopeful. So hope and possibilities. Yes, yes. She is the embodiment of that today. We see that and, and for her tenure as the Governor General. I love her dress today. She's very um, smartly dressed. Big hat, that wide hat. Um, um, definitely helpful for the for the warm weather we're having today. <laughs> so I wonder like, if she's thinking about when she served as Minister of National Security. You I, know, I, you know that's the thing you have to remember too, because she was actually the minister for all of these people out here now who are actually um, uh, giving this performance in her honor, um, and I'm sure she knows many of them personally. Um, so it may have a, an extra sort of um, uh, meaning for them as well. And we saw a lot of people, even though, even when she was giving her address, still making their way, hustling to get inside the room. So I imagine and there is packed to capacity now um, as we were chatting about it, talking about the fact that, you know, she has touched so many different people in the various capacities that she has served in throughout the years, being a, a nurse, being an educator, being a politician, you know, being a coach, so many different hats, and everyone who has spoken about her has spoken so well about her passion, her love for her God, you know, that's one thing you always know, that there, there may be a sermon coming somewhere. <laughs> There's definitely going to be a very address. strong reference yes, uh, yes. To, to spirituality and to the Almighty, um, but, but a very proud day for, I think, Bahamians everywhere, but also particularly for the people of the Grove, and especially uh, Amos Ferguson Street. Eh? Yes, they must be very, very proud of her right now. I mean, from the announcement um, that she would be the, become the next Governor General, when we visited with them, there was this sense of pride and accomplishment that, that hey, one of us is now being elevated to the highest office. And, and your guest highlighted that, um, uh, Ms. Turnquist, I believe? Yes, yeah. Vincey Turnquist. Yeah, so, um, uh, and, and, and in these times, I think we need encouragement and positivity more than ever. We need to remind people of what is possible. Stay focused. I mean, whatever your path is, sometimes you never know. Sometimes it's the, you think it's, it's going to be a straight path, but you get a curveball here, you get a curveball there, and you wonder, am I going to be redirected to what my goals or beliefs are? And then you never know, and boom, like, look at her today. Did, I, like you, you referenced earlier, did she think she would be here? Your goals and... Uh, desires and ambitions may not be anywhere near as lofty as God's. This is true. This <laughs> is true. This is true. But uh, as you said, the ceremony is uh, in its final moments now. After this, um, uh, uh, there will be official photographs, of course, and I'm sure a reception in the upper garden. But our broadcast will end uh, just before that. But uh, there they are. They're white. And then the police officers. And she's making sure to greet and chat with every one of them. So I know probably for the women, seeing that it's a, a, a such a proud moment. I know that they are always smartly dressed, but maybe they did a little bit extra today to say, "Hey, this is this is a great moment. This is just an historic moment." They, you know, they're gonna want those photos to say, "Hey, I was a part of the all-female honor guard when uh, the new governor general did her inspection." I, I need that photo. Absolutely, absolutely, and. Uh, the Governor General is going to have to, this is the first of many that she will 
men need to come. True. Men yes. need to come. Always so pleasant. She it seemed like she almost spoke to almost all of them. <laughs> But uh, it will be interesting to see um, um, what our first official. Well, this is the first official act here. But after this, is there a timeline for when she is expected to present herself to His Majesty? Well, that depends on the agenda of uh, King Charles. From three to six months, maybe sooner. Uh, but then she will have her game hall, DCMG, and uh, BBE. And uh, that comes with the uh, the office. The office. We see a combined band there for the Royal Bahamas Police and Defence Force band who are always ready to perform for these occasions as well. So she is making her way around that area now. Yes, I think she is. Yes, she's getting back, back to the days. And at that point, um, uh, she will receive some flowers, some bouquet of flowers. And then she will take uh, official photographs with the Prime Minister, Mrs. Davis, the Chief Justice of Mrs. Winder, the Secretary to the Cabinet, the Commissioner of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Commander of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. And I imagine it's going to be a great celebration on the upper grounds after all of the official formalities that uh, done. Because just on her arrival, there was this rousing round of applause. And as we expected, as you mentioned, she she is now the Governor General that is receiving a bouquet of flowers from a young lady. A very large bouquet <laughs> that our protocol officers would have taken away. Again, now that she's leaving the days, it's time for official photographs that you mentioned that will take place uh, with the Prime Minister and his wife, the Chief Justice, and his wife, Secretary to the Cabinet both the Commissioner and a police and Commodore of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. Again, she's chatting there on your screen with uh, Prime Minister and Mrs. Davis. She's going to move up to, she just passed by uh, the Chief Justice as well. So now she's going to make her way, I assume, to prepare for those official photographs. Yes. So that means heading up to the upper gardens. You know, we have to remind people again because um, uh, one of our colleagues is saying, um, I thought she was the 11th Governor General of the Bahamas. I'm like, no, she's the 11th Bahamian yes. Governor General. Yes. But when we became independent, uh, July 10, 1973, so John Paul, who was actually Governor, became Governor General of the Bahamas. And after that, Sir Milo Butler became the first Bahamian um, to become. So again, she is the third female yes. Governor General as well. Yes. Uh, Dame Ivy DeWant, Dame Marguerite Pindling, and soon to be Dame Cynthia Parr. Yeah, so as we saw her just making her entrance into the upper gardens where she is expected to take official 
photographs and we see the uh, band preparing to make their exit as well. So a wonderful, wonderful, I mean, it was a little bit longer, but it was worth, it was definitely worth it to, you know, hear from everyone, to see everyone's pride and feel their excitement to be a, so, to be a part of this historic event. And as we prepare to close now, Jiminita, what are your final comments? Well, I'm excited, and I feel like all young people should consider her words to them to be good and shining examples to ensure that they, you know, represent themselves to the best of their ability. She has always been one of service. Uh, we find that, you know, she's always giving back. So I think we as a people could learn from her and figure out how we can serve in some capacity and give back and just trust whatever so, God has for us as well. There's so many ways to give service. And it's not just monitoring your time. It's actually a, often a lot better than, than just the money. But anyway, as we bring this broadcast to a close, we want to thank you all for joining us. I want to say a special thanks to our production team here at the ZNS Network. And may you all have a wonderful and safe weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You know, when, when I think about my legacy, it started a long time ago. And throughout my years, I have setting the, been setting the pace to this point, not knowing it, not knowing it. And so as I came along, I brought my people along with me. And so when I stand at my gate, even now, I have so many of them stopping to let me know what I did for them and their families years ago that I didn't even remember. So this is what, when we say legacy, this is what I'm talking about. I want my people to know there once was a woman from the inner city who God had lifted up from the pit to the palace. That is most important for God to get the glory. So my legacy must be that I continue to give God the praise and let the Bahamian people know that there is a God. That's why I love the Bahamas, because it is a Christian nation. Live from Government House, it's the official induction ceremony of the Right Honorable Cynthia Pratt as Governor General of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas.